Hi, so uh, some of you know me, some don't. I've got a few eclectic bits of Shelley that I collect. I've been collecting Shelley since probably the mid 90s back in South Africa. Uh, gravitated towards um, Vogue and Mode in the probably 2005 10s time. Uh, always had some nursery wear, you know, teas and coffee sets and various other things. So here yeah, I want to cover just a light covering the general of nursery wear and a bit of a broader coverage of uh, maybe Lucy Atwell. Um, so for me, in terms of the main nursery wear illustrators, some of the most memorable and well-known names I know illustrators used at Shelley were Linda Edgerton, Kate Greenaway, Hilda Cowan, and obviously Mabel Lucy Atwell. I think most know their names. They're reasonably well-known with Linda Edgerton stuff's being uh, highly sought after, pretty expensive and pretty rare. Hilda Cowan's been pre reasonably prolific. And fairly pricey on some of the uh, you know uh, rarer pieces. I think with uh, Mabel Lucy Atwell being the most prolific, and some pieces being quite expensive. I'm sure, there must be others, but these are the names I, I know best. And obviously, there's a few other bits and pieces with signatures on, and sometimes you can read, and sometimes you can't. In terms of early nursery wear designs, and you know they include uh, generally known nursery wear or colloquially known figures. There's the Puff Puff range about a train, the Blue Boy, which is obviously an old uh, old British painting and so on. Red Riding Hood, Children Having Fun, Pity Pat and Tippy Toe from the Lullaby Land by Eugene Field in the series. There's a Dutch Children Range, the Peter Pan Range. There's the Army Navy Artillery things, etc. There's a Brighter Air, which is said to be with a more modern look, and obviously various other illustrations. I'll show a small cross section of these just for a flavor before obviously getting more into uh, maybe Lucy Atwell. So, my terms of collecting nursery wear, as I collected other things, as I've said and now, and I've said before, I gravitated towards Shelley before I left South Africa. I started collecting a few things in the, that mid to late 90s. And I enjoyed the clever ditties on the Mabel Lucy Eckwell pieces and the matching pictures with them. So I've always appreciated that type of artistry. Because I'm a bit OCD and uh, that's um, for humor. Some people who know me might say I really am. But um, you know, I decided to collect a piece of everything that I could see uh, in that type of range and to branch into other nursery where too. The main emphasis of Mabel Lucy Atwell, so I have a little bit of coverage of uh, you know most of the nursery work to some extent. In terms of Mabel Lucy Atwell, uh, 1879 to 64, there's a picture where she's a bit younger and one uh, closer to her death. She was born in Mile End in London, June 79, sixth child of butcher Augustus Atwell and his wife Emily Ann. Educated privately at the Cooper's um, Company School and at the Regent School uh, Street School. She studied at Heavily's and St. Martin's School of Art, but left to develop her own interest in imaginary subjects, just like the emphasis on still life drawing and classical subjects. She initially uh, founded a career with magazine illustrations, Tatler and things like that, I think it was. Uh, around 1900, she started reading, commi receiving commissions for book illustrations. <clears throat> and in 1926, Shelley commissioned her to produce designs for children to China where and this shot followed shortly uh, after the success of the uh, Hilda Cowan line. She introduced boo-boos in the initial range, and for those people don't know what boo-boos are, we'll see enough of them going through the presentation. And the initial range consists of six rhymes and illustrations. She had several further ranges, and by the end of it, had 32 different distinct rhymes and uh, images. In 1937, uh, a series of figurines was introduced and with the small L's in various poses, or boo-boos as they're called. A quick mention of uh, the other three names I, I spoke of. Kate Greenaway, 1846 to 1901, a Victorian artist that was also known for children's book illustrations. She worked a fair bit in the card market and greeting cards and things like that. And she did several books of her own, the first one being in 1879. Linda Edgerton, 1890 to 1983. She attended the Sutton School of Art part-time, but was mainly self-taught. She loved painting nursery rhymes and fairy tales and submitted samples to various publishers. In the post Great War period, her work appeared in color and in cutout books and on postcards. Her work was chosen for a series by Shelley in around 1924 as well. In terms of Hilda Cowan, 1873 to 1964, she attended several schools of art, including the Royal College of Art. One of the first women illustrators to publish in Punch. She also illustrated children's books. And she started with Shelley in, eight, in 1924, 
for around 35 and was said to be a friend of maybe Lucy Eccles. All right, I'd like to have a look at collectors and collecting, going back to the OCD thing. Each collector has their own drivers in terms of what to collect and any specific rules they apply around this, price, color, shape, condition, damage, et cetera. So for instance, this week I picked up a, or a week before I picked up a, a cup, it's got a hairline. I didn't know at the time when I bought it, but um, I'll keep it at a slightly reduced price because it's got a different um, rim color and a rarer rim color. So, you know, for that reason, I'll keep that one. Maybe at some point I'll get a, a decent one, uh, you know, in the same same pattern. So what to collect? Again, specific uh, in, in the mind of the collector. So for me, big depth in MLA and baby wear, fair few candlesticks, tea and coffee sets, vases. Of specific patterns, I have a lot of uh, sunrise and tall trees, you know, Queen Anne. And of course, specific interest, as I've said before, is the Bergen Mode, main pattern book. And lately, in the last uh, two, three years, I've been expanding my collection in Tarsia, the Walter Slater. I probably managed to get about 30 pieces plus in the last uh, three or four years. For my rules, names in collecting, uh, and this is just applied to nursery wear and maybe Lucy Apple specifically. Uh, the aims I, 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 uh, I apply, I want at least one piece of each of the 32 designs. Where I can get more, I will, but I've got I've got at least one of each at the moment. And some of them, three or four of them, I've only got one because they're rarely seen. Uh, I want to try and get a piece in each of the distinct sizes and shapes of uh, items she had a, had a pattern on. And I know I'm missing a few of those. And, um, and I'd like to have a sample of all the figurines. Again, they can be quite pricey, so I'm not a rush there. And I reckon I'm you know, a little bit over halfway. So I would also like a, a sample of each of the nursery wear types done by uh, Shelley and Wyman. And I've got many at this stage. And like most collectors, anything that comes up for a reasonable price that I don't have, and I've got money in the pocket, I'll probably buy it. Pity, but such is life. All right, so some of the, the um, earlier designs, here's a few early Wildmans. Again, you can see um, rhymes on them and things. You ever heard of the Sugar Plum Three? Uh, see what a wonderful garden is here. You know, that, these are quite nicely colored. Um, uh, interesting to read, you've got to spin them around. Here's one of the Pity Pat, and uh, you, know, you can obviously get Pity Pat and Tippy Toe on separate all together. In 1913, they had a new nursery series. I've only got this one in it, but there were six different um, things written. Uh, here's Kids Tobogganing. Here's a bit of a look at the Puff Puff range. You know, I think there's again about five or six pictures on this. And they're to do with train, here going over a viaduct um, in a station, etc. cetera. Um, look at the, uh, some of these are called units that are all Navy or units of, uh, you know, something else, so the units of the RAF, I think this one down, the, the plane in the bottom left. The two in the top, uh, the, the lamp on, on the right-hand side, um, that's uh, obviously artillery style pieces. Again, quite an interesting range. I had, um, I've got a few pieces in Little Boy Blue. And there's a few teddy ones, and they, you know, got a little sen sense of humor. And the one in the plane, Teddy Breaks the Record, which is flying somewhere. Have these children at play with about half a dozen different scenes and doing different things. They have the Dutch children type of range. Very un PC these days. Little Dutchman has your pa seen you with that big cigar. And you know, little Dutchman answers yes. Dutch boys often smoke like this. You know, I'm not sure you, you have so straightforward things these days without a complaint. The brighter wear range, as I said, a more modern looking style. Just really nursery, nursery rhymes, as far as I could tell, on the ones I've seen. Again, a bunch of nursery rhymes. I think these are a little bit later. Um, this style of them, sometimes that looks like at the back, they've got quite different sized um, uh, Shelley stamps, and some of them look like they're over the glaze, not under, but they tend to, to look original. But I think they're just general rhymes, probably fairly late ish. Old Mother Hubbard and these two are the front and back, and Jack and Jill went up the hill and then fell down. Only two cups. Just a few other general pictures. One on the bottom left, Sleeping Beauty. The one on the top right is five different animals around it. Uh, obviously slightly older. The one on the top um, right has um, 
kids playing. There's a little crack in the top in the in the in on the source of it. You know, for I think 13 pounds when I got in England, I thought it was okay to have as a as a strange sample, something different. And I quite like the top hat parade, one of the oval um, baby dishes, and fish. And again, here's just some um, baby plates, different styles. This one down here, Cinderella on the bottom right. Two I've shown here, the uh, one in the bottom middle, uh, old lady who lived in a shoe. That's where it shows the, the patent uh, copyright, uh, patent supply for in the US where they called it over there. They've got a Shelley back stamp with the Shelley Nursery China England over, over stamped. And the one above that would probably be a whiteware or something that Shelley had done. And this Noah Oaks, North Chelsea Steps have probably then taken that whiteware and decorated it themselves or something like that because that's not a typical Shelley decoration. Okay, let's quick, quick look at uh, Kate Greenaway, uh, Greenaway style of, of pieces. Um, they're fairly quite distinct in their, in their look and style. Let's look at Linda Edgerton. I think there's about six of these as well. Um, these, as I say, are quite sought after, quite difficult to come across and um, fairly pricey when you find them. Some Hilda Cow nursery wear. Again, she's got a range similar to the top left and right um, plates. Uh, little Bo Peep and a few other uh, similar ones. You know, there's a range more similar to the, um, the bottom cup and saucer. And of course, there's a, a set of pin dishes. I was actually looking at the pin dishes with Helen the other day, because uh, she's got quite a few and I've got a few and then I, saw, I know one other. So we know there's at least eight of the pin dishes. Um, yeah, interesting to, to know this. We thought there was about six, but Helen's got seven, and I know one other, so that makes eight of them. That's interesting. There might even be others. Okay, and then we move on to maybe Lucy Apple. So there was um, obviously advertising to try and um, promote uh, the range of nursery wear, mid to late 20s and uh, early 30s, etc. You see, it quite, quite nice. And let's not look at the prices because we'll all be disappointed at what we have to pay now to, to get a piece. But um, it was quite nicely advertised, uh, the Boo Boo uh, tea set. And why I've got this one over here on the, on the right hand side is, as you can see, in that um, set of uh, Eve dinnerware and coffee and services and so on, they've got a Our Pets, which is the name of that figurine, that double figurine in the middle, in a lamp format. I've seen several different lamp formats with other figurines, but um, I haven't actually got one myself. Just to mention while we're here, I think there's, you know, Robin's on. She's one of the large collectors of Mabel Lucy Atwell. Probably has a lamp, who knows? Might let us know later. And um, there's a guy in England by the name of Adam Lovejoy who's writing a book at the moment. And he's got a wonderful collection. I saw one I was over there in June or July. Um, and, you know, he's, he's got, writing his book, of course, he's gathered a lot of knowledge and it's nice to see some of the pieces he has. Move over to the um, series of uh, rhymes and um, pictures, or ditties as I like to call them. First series, 1926. There was six different um, pictures and uh, images and, and, and ditties in this, um, in this series. And these are the you know, first two. Uh, and I've taken for each of them just so people can see on the, uh, just below or with them, I've put the rhyme. So where you can't read it, you can try and read it on the, uh, in, in the wording I've put there. Each of them had a main, um, generally seems to be a main uh, rim color. Uh, so I've shown the one on, on the left there in two rim colors. Generally a secondary rim color on some of them is, can be quite difficult to find. You've got a lot of the early shape was Savoy in terms of the cups, etc. But there are certainly quite a few variations I've seen in cups and so on. I think the top uh, right is possibly something like a hot water pot. The reason I've got the cup there shown on the on the bottom right is it's got a it's one of the unusual cups I've got. I'm sure there are must be several around like that. But it's an early cup with a um, little bit of a uh, pressed out rim on the top and a little pressed out rim on the bottom. Most of them are fairly straight or with a slight outer curve towards the top. Next two, um, they have beakers as well as can be seen on the on the left. The beaker doesn't have um, a handle. It's the same size as the as the tall, taller mug, but no handle. And again, they're, they're quite pretty. Uh, you don't see many of them at all. 
the one on the right shows a cake plate and at this stage i've seen three types of cake plates one with this typical tab handle and later i've got a, just a picture of i picked up off the web of one with a a vogue mode or you know more style of a, a triangular tab handle and then i've got a picture of my own circular cake plate so they did a couple of types of cake plates as well came in several colors each with a you know single single lithium and um, image on it the last two in the first series and another cake plate there one of my favorites oh mr rabbit do crack your gam or else you will get most awfully damp and from that we can take it a gamp as an umbrella which i didn't know until i read that uh, the donkeys on the uh Oh, sorry, yeah, the donkey pulling some boo-boos on the right. Then we get a second series uh, introduced in 1929. And again, this series consisted of uh, six different um, rhymes and images. And these seem to be, I think, a fair, fairly difficult to get some of these, actually. But Mr. Mousy in your motor car, I don't see too often. And... Um, the left hand side one will somebody tell me beers if you tell me please if you know any beers as sweet as these again not seen that often must have a good trio in it shown the one in the middle because you can see you get some fading it looks a bit gray on the bottom baby plate uh, but the actual shirt's worn out its color of course these were used by kids so you know even with a little bit of wear occasionally they're still worth grabbing if you can't find uh, the image that often the next three in that series again the um mr uh, on guard and bobby bear also seem quite difficult to get just leave you a few seconds if anyone wants to read the read the rhymes on those later designs these introduced around 1936 37 ish um, as you can see, they had warming plates. So there's on the on the right, a warming plate with the, you know, the laddie who lives in a tree with fairies to love him and ask him to tea. I tend to forget the rhymes, but as soon as I see the start of them again in the images, I, they come to mind pretty quick. They had, I think, three different plate sizes. The left-hand picture shows the intermediate and the small plate. Small plates probably, uh, you know, five or six inches or five-ish and the big plates about six inches. The, the, the larger plates probably about eight inches. Then these in that uh, same type of time. The top right picture is more a, you know, like a soup style bowl or something like that. It's quite a large bowl, eight or nine inches across on the outer rim. Um, again, they did this with the oval, uh, the bottom left, the oval as well as the round baby plates. And on the bottom right, a few slightly different um, baby plates, slightly thinner, um, with a sort of like a fat edge with a rounded base. Some more, a different style teapot here uh, than, than most people would have seen in the Boo Boo range or the uh, animals range. So I quite like that teapot picked up in Australia. And again, one of my favorite uh, images with rhymes. If I had a fairy, how jolly it would be. I'd bathe him in a teacup and take him walk with me. Uh, the one on the right, the airplane, that seems to be a lot of people's favorite. So I think you know, most people like it. You know, think that's fairly sought after. A few more. This one, I tried to polish up this rim slightly just to prove it's silver. So on the, on the, on the left bottom, um baby plate it's a doesn't have baby plate written on like some of them that gray band around the outside's a, a um a silver rim it does polish up but of course i don't like to sit and polish too much of the silverware it's uh it's only going to tarnish again but uh i did rub a piece on it to try and show but obviously i uh, didn't show it well enough on the um right you can see a different style baby plate it's got a little um, stopper in it so you can fill the base with water you know, the other one had a screw on cap this one's a stopper and then you've got a lid you can put on top of which with a ring you know so you can pick up pick, pick up the lid and uh, obviously your your well looked after child can eat nicely from their expensive porcelain a few more 
there are, I see in a couple, as, as I show on the, on the left here, I like both those pictures. I have seen a couple where the image of the face is a bit more florid on some, maybe a little bit of um, uh, spread of color or they uh, well, couldn't see the color well while they were applying it. But the, the, the cup to the right of those two is obviously met more on the cheeks and on the boobers as well. The cup to the left that, uh, that both the faces of, of all figurines are a little bit more, more blushed. The center one with the um, boo-boos at the door in the orange and yellow costumes is also quite a quite a one, one I quite like. So here I've put a few pictures of the donkey one. These ones were um, introduced in 46, 7-ish. Again, this rhymes, I had a donkey and a cart to take me for a ride. He looked so sad, I simply had to put old donk inside. Now why I've shown this one is it's unusual. Well, first off, it's the only round cake plate I've seen. Second off, it's a light color on the cake plate, light color on the bottom right bowl. Uh, the top right bowl is a dark blue, but it's also got a rippled rim. So that's only one I've got with the rippled rim. I've got about four with the straight rim as in the bottom right. And then the plate has a purplish rim. Again, this seems to have a slightly uh, more coloring than uh, a few different color ranges than most of them. Most of them have got a second one. This seems to have three, three colors to it. To its rim colors. Again, the same same type of time range, 46, 47. Top left one, um, again, very nice. Fairies love motoring all about. Two wouldn't sit still, so they fell out. Obviously, they look like they're trying to catch up. Uh, little man in his caravan is also quite nice. Um, and there on the on the right is a sugar bowl. And I think uh, more in the range. And here again, the uh, image on the right, you can see on the two cups at the bottom, there's quite a different um, coloring of the face of those figures. And again, the bowl above it matches the face of the, of the one that are more florid. Obviously, the one on the left at the bottom cup, bottom, you know, the two cups on the left would be more the reasonable coloring. Again, the, um, the bluebird on the top left, uh, you can see the, there's two different colors of the rims on those mugs. A uh, blue rim and a, and a pink rim, you see it in the handle as well. But you'll notice on the blue one that's on gravitated to the outside of the cup. On the pink one, it's on the inside of the cup. So they had little variations all over the place. Okay, so just to go back here, sorry, that had a pink rim on the on the on the right hand um, uh, fairy band one, the fairy land, whereas this plate on the left here has a yellow border. These last two designs are on the, uh, the, the Fisherman Joe and the Cowboy James. They're introduced in the 50s. There are some thought by some that could have been um, uh, maybe Lucy Eccles' daughter was involved with those. But um, I've only heard that from one or two people over in England with thoughts on that. The, the top one, though it's got a Shelley um, back stamp, the handle of the cup's a bit strange. It's more like possibly a... Um, a Royal Albert style cup or something, but it does have a Shelley back stamp. No other color on it, which is unusual as well. No room color on that one. All right, to move on to a few other things. So you can see napkin rings and napkin rings come in obviously various patterns, not just the nursery wear. For those that don't know napkin rings, you have a two level stands where the napkin ring sits, sits up like I've shown in the top right picture. And it sits up on these two little um, spigots or feet or stand or you want to call it. There are several different um, patterns, I believe, three or four different style of patterns. So of the pictures around the rim, around the neck and ring, and there's just two of them there. In terms of the silver, silver, um, you can see on the two cups that one is polished and I keep that one polished and the other one is not polished. I've got about four with the silver rims. Um, tarnished style is okay for now, but the Lower picture shows the sterling silver uh, 925, which is obviously 92.5% silver in the alloy on the uh, still with its silver sticker on that on that one cup that I polished up. You don't want to polish them too often because as you slide them around in your hands and rub the rub them, there's always this feeling that you might drop it at some point and I've come close once or twice. So hence they will not be polished too often. 
parties, chamber pots. Now these, they come in several sizes and um, at least two, I think there's three sizes, but I, I know I've seen at least two. And um, they came with a picture on each side, but none of the rhymes written down. So the right details, but no, no words. And you see, I've got the two where I've shown you the different picture on either side. Uh, some further items. Um, the picture on the left, a vase that I've seen, uh, I took from online. I've seen two different vases. I missed one in an auction not too long ago. The bowl I've got, it's a Harmony West style. So I think that's a, a, a later range, uh, but it's no, no distinguishing from the earlier ranges that much. But yeah, the Harmony, Harmony West style to them. There was obviously um, pin, uh, jam dishes as well, uh, or pin dishes. There's a couple in the middle there. And I've shown just on the top right there a, a, a Humpty Dumpty uh, baby plate. And obviously it's not made loose yet, well, but they've got a few boo-boos on it, which is interesting. I don't know, maybe they had spare decals or maybe someone else knows why they would, would, would do that. But there are a couple of pieces around where they've thrown the occasional boo-boo on. Egg cups. Uh, they had a few different styles. So the top left egg cups, they have got a fitted base. So it's glued on ceramic together, whatever you want to call it. You can sort of like see where they're joined. And this, you look at it from only, it's more like, it's almost like a, um, a, a ceramic rivet, almost the shape of it. But yeah, it's, they're joined, they're fitted together. They have on the top left the uh, no base or the flat base. Again, different rim colors, et cetera, different patterns. And then the bottom ones, they're the same two in the pictures, but why I showed those, the, the, the left one's slightly taller. And if you see on the, on the right, bottom right picture, the left one has a flat base and the right one of those two has a curved base. So most of them I've got of the curved base. But for some reason, they obviously experimented with how they're making the base because the right and uh, the left and one of those two has an actually flat base. And again, if you look at the right hand picture, probably a different age made. Uh, the bottom left picture, sorry. Um, one's got it, the pink one's got a trim around the foot, the other one's got nothing around the foot. So again, different styles. And you have to look closely at times to notice the different styles if you're going to decide to buy something or not. Um, showing the ages, the years for these, the left end one, the boo boo uh, tea set or mushroom tea set, 1926. The animals tea set on the, on the right, 1929. Um, again, I think there's three sizes in each of the teapots. Um, I've shown on the bottom the two two of the animal sizes, and I've got two of the um, boo boo teapot sizes. And my second one's in white, where I'll show in a second. The uh, sleepy head night light. Again, it's uh, about I'll show you about eight inches tall, and then they had a cruet set. Both of these with the similar dots. If you'll just page up back to the mushroom and the um, the boo boo tea set. They were both 1936-ish. Okay, there's my white teapot. Question is that during wartime, there are, there are some of the boo-boos and other things were seen in whiteware, uh, undecorated. And actually at a recent sale, um, the auction at the Pottery's auctions in England, they had quite a few aqua figurines. And at least eight of probably eight or 10 of them um, looked to have been uh, potentially whiteware that's been painted years later by somebody who obviously know what the painting should look like, but uh, they were definitely not uh, not original um, from factory painted. Again, 1937, they introduced again two, a couple of pieces, the juicer on the on the right there, and the milk jug in the, in the bottom left picture, that again are, are like, you could match them with that Hulu um, range, tea set range. All right, move on to the boo-boos. All the figurines should have, or are, are related to a number as far as I can tell, though some of them don't have numbers on their base. And most of the small ones got done in a blue and a green, but doesn't seem to be all of them. So as we see on the, on the top left, we've got the boo-boo on a donkey, LA 10 and 26. Uh, mine doesn't have a number on it, but I've seen a few online with LA 26. And normally you'll see in these 12, 24, 17, 29, the numbers normally 12 apart, except there because 22 is taken by something else. So uh, it must have been the point in time when they did it in the range, but funny enough, the numbers often 12 apart. It's done with a watering can, sitting on a puppy. And we've got them with mushrooms, and a pair of blue and um, 
green. And there's these three separate ones, Boo Boo jumping over a log, carrying a sack and uh, on a log with acorn. And funny, a handout uh, Robin gave a couple of years ago at a fair, I think shows a blue um, Boo Boo with an acorn, but I've never seen one of them in that picture. Um, so if they are, if they do exist, I presume they do, very rare. Again, the um, mushroom one, LA11 and LA23, 12 numbers apart. It's just the first one that's not. And they have the larger figurines. Um, you have the golfer. You have on the on the left the toddler. First three LAs, one, two, and three are all the toddler. And can't find much about them. The toddler I've got there, the big one is LA3 for sure. That's on the back. And I've taken pictures of two other toddlers that are both look like according to the, the good the quality of the painting, potentially well. Potentially proper toddlers, maybe it was just a different color range, maybe somebody else knows. LA1 and 2. When you find references for them, they don't seem to be distinguished that much. In terms of the um, bride and bridegroom in the middle, they are available in a straight head version and in a wavy head version. These are the wavy head version, these are mine. Now, I believe there should be LA5 on the bride and LA6 on the bridegroom, but both of these are marked as LA5. Maybe just a mistake. And then there's Diddlums. Here we have just a couple of pictures I grabbed from the internet. So here we have the curator with um, the bride and the bridegroom on the top right. There's an interesting sound. In the top right, and those are the straight head versions. Our pets, which is the only double on the left, is only double and the largest of the figurines, about eight inches tall. And a few others, we've got Isgay Tata. How am I doing? Patricia, again, not rarely, uh, not often seen. Again, I'm not really sure the proper colorway for Patricia or its LA number. Gardner's boy, she's the LA 22. And maybe Lucy Atwell, there are also seconds. There seems to have been these factory style seconds. And then obviously uh, items that have been decorated out of factory. Some of the um, history of some of them is known. So they were known basically they were seconds and maybe painted in a different non-standard color range by somebody in the factory. Particular note here, I've got both the golfers there. So the bottom right is a um, basically the factory colors. And the one uh, just next to it, you can see he's got a paler face. Uh, doesn't really have the whites of the eyes or the eyebrows. And the one on the uh, the, the factory uh, uh, first is a, got a thicker base, so it stands slightly taller. Otherwise, they're pretty identical, maybe misshapen or factory's got a thin base or something made the, the other one a second and it maybe seems to have been painted then by somebody else in the factory but as long as they didn't seem to paint it the proper factory colors seems to be all right often they were black and base and once or twice you find you may find them on the internet where somebody's removed the base and the shelly stamps there they rarely if ever have a maybe lucy atwell um signature on them and i don't think they have the la numbers either generally and there's a Patricia in the top right that's got a pale face. I don't even think the person selling it knows it's, uh, you know, it doesn't seem to be the the, the right uh, original factory first. And again, I just show on the on the left there, the curator and a, and a straight head bridegroom with the bases blackened out. Move on to a few other things I found on the internet just to show and I'm aware of. Again, there's a boo boo there on the on the top uh, right in white. I've got some other white pictures later. There were jam pots on, on the left. Very nice. I'd like to have one of them. And there's been around this cup in the middle. There's been around a few of these. You don't see them often. There's one on the internet at the moment, which has got a hairline. It's in America, so it makes it difficult to grab. But um, again, with just boo boos over them, uh, you know, with the rabbit as well, and a picture on the back of a cup here with a rabbit holding hands with a boo boo. These, there's three or four different ones I've seen over the last few years. They don't come up often. They do go for fairly high prices because they're pretty rare. No ditties or no, nothing written on them. I presume this orange haired boo boo here, the milk jug, uh, probably factory. Um, I don't have a reference to it other than I've seen it once or twice. And recently in England, I think this cup on the bottom right sold. I can't remember the name of that shape, but it's a shape not often seen with that 
and that's a, a image that's not seen that often either. Again, another cup slightly different. You see the little uh, top right uh, left there. You'll see the, the the rabbits and things with the boo boo holding hands. More of them. Uh, center image. I think I've seen that on found it online. I think I've seen it in somebody's collection. It's, uh, it's a plate all decorated with Medley's Jack, or believed to be a prototype at some point. Um, the cup on the top right. Uh, there's been two in that type of shape again shape not seen often uh, sold over the last little while on ebay in england i only saw them after the fact so no bidding on those there the bottom right is a um eve style or art deco style more triangular handle cake, cake plate and you'll see in the potty in the you know chamber pots you can also get them with blushed or well, that one's blushed but with the color on the outside uh somehow you know just in a, in a blush style effect with with the images again not seen that often the other bits there's a few uh, a white wear range of the uh, of different boo-boos uh, or figurines sorry in, in the top middle there's our pets and the uh, brides and a few other bits and pieces the golfer toddler etc uh top left a regent style uh, teapot it was on an auction somewhere Again, I saw that after the fact, but uh, you, know, you don't see them often in regions. Um, the bottom left plate I show because it's the right image, it's the right um, you know, ditty with it. They're all, all right. It's a ripple edge plate with a Royal Albert back stamp. Uh, Maybe one of the things Royal Albert did before they closed them down after they absorbed them. And in the uh, right picture there is you could see you could get them in nursery sets. There's a few of them around and um, they go quite pricey, of course, but uh, it'd be nice to have in display. In the middle, supposedly you could get from the factory, you could write in and, and at a cost to get them to, you know, you could use the mugs, for christening mugs and that type of thing. So you can get them, I think, in normally in gold to add writing on them for you. So there's been a couple seen online. It's always a question, are they original? Aren't they original? Is this done after the factory? But you could get the factory to do it for you. And that one says from Douglas to be an uncle or something of some kid. A few other special items. A few of these pictures from uh, Chris Davenport. So we have on the left, this um, like menu style, this child studies, and below that, uh, more like the Shelley type of advertising signs you'd see. And I think he said they were from the uh, showroom at the factory, so I believe they're one-offs. They are certainly rare and certainly would be very nice to have in the collection. There was a, a mermaid maid, believed to be maybe three, four, five of them around. LA-31 never went into production. It's also an unusual looking figure, I would say. Um, again, there's probably other LA-32, 33, et cetera. There's probably things in there, and I've heard of other things, but I don't have pictures. There was, as on the right on the top, is the Mushroom Village. Again, a smallest piece that was uh, never put into proper production, but um, a couple of them made and rarely seen. And the last thing I'll finish on is fakes. And again, here I've um, said I can't really do much better than the British Club website. This collects the, they've collected a lot of the pictures there, I think, that have been seen online and often mails, emails going around. Numerous fakes similar to these type of images. Uh, they're on auctions. They used to be just on eBay a couple of years ago. Um, seeing them for 10 or 12 years and they're starting to appear in auctions in England at the moment occasionally and I think they fool a fair few people because you know uh, at the right price you know the cheap price something unique somebody would like a piece of MLA and don't do their research and a few people will buy them I think now there's that type of fake obviously done to um you know, to, to improve value of things other fakes include where decals have been used on real Shelley pieces, and uh, that's often done on bands and swirls type pieces, or whiteware from the factory, which is I referred to earlier, be later painted, etc. It's fine to later paint them as long as you let people know or whatever, or don't don't try and make it have a Shelley back stamp or look like you know, exactly say it's she it's the original Shelley. But there's also pieces made under license, um, mostly ceramics, and uh, a couple of pieces being made for the clubs, etc. But they clearly note stuff, you know, things that the club might say, item number 200 or for 500 range done for, you know, Club X. So those are the top of things. 
All right, I'm going to stop sharing there. I think that's uh, the presentation and just show you one or two pieces. So, I don't know. So, there is our pets. And I've got a nine inch span. So, that's about an eight inch tall figurine. And that's the largest of the figurines. Compare that with the boobloops uh, holding his acorn. It's quite tiny in relation, probably around about three inches. And then of a similar size to our pets is the sleepyhead nightlight. And you can see the um, fitting in there for put the electrics in and a little hole in the edge for the cord to come through. All right, that's me done, Helen.